What does your sos family do that's just plain weird? Not my so anymore but my ex's dad would lay out in a lawn chair in the backyard, dressed in jeans and a shirt and listen to Iron Maiden with his straight from the 80s boombox, and stare at the sun, not the sky or clouds, the sun. He's just metal as frick, don't worry about it. Above all, this, my SO's father refuses to have more than one light bulb on in the living room after dinner when it's dark outside. We just sit there in this large room, barely able to see one another, with only one 15 watt bulb going in a lamp in the distance. One time I got up and turned on another lamp so I could read something, and he got up immediately, without a word, and shut it off. You should bring a miner's lamp helmet with you next time. Not so much weird, more annoying. They talk really loud. If someone wants to say something they have to talk louder than the other so it basically becomes a shouting competition. With the kids turning up the volume of the TV, which makes them scream louder. They also think it's weird that they don't have good hearing ability. So weird about money. Thank god my wife doesn't follow their lead. If my in-laws pick us up something from the store we need to pay them exactly what it cost. $12.42, $16.81, etc. If it came to $12.81 and we have $13 total they will give us back the 19 cents. Also, if we get stuff for them we receive the exact money in cash. $7.82, $11.41, etc. Christmas? Yay. We all have to get as close as humanly possible to spending the exact amount on each other. If I spend $12 on my father-in-law and we were only supposed to spend $10 rest assured I'll be getting $2 in the mail in the near future. We have them over for dinner and we get a pizza. They will figure out how much their slices cost. So if the pie came to $12.50 and there were 8 slices and they have 4 total. Yep we're getting $6.24 from them doesn't matter how much we insist on not taking money. It's comical at this point but still so weird. They didn't drive. Not a single one of them except the girl I was dating. They always relied on other people for rides. Then, after you said no, they'd try to guilt trip you into it after complaining that cabs are expensive. It took about a month for me to realize that they did this to everyone they knew, and I could just say no. It was such a freaking headache. Half the time my girlfriend was out running her family around. A bunch of manipulative fricks those people were. All hours of the night too. So and so needs a ride to the hospital because he has a headache. Then call a freaking ambulance. Oh, wait. You want me to run you to Walmart on the way back. Hey, you have a truck. Can you help us pick up a couch? Oh, now you want me to stop at three more places. But you can't actually load anything because your gout is flaring up or whatever. Pieces of crap. I feel like I've been waiting forever for an appropriate place to tell this story. My in-laws are crazy frugal. Like almost to the level of extreme cheapskate TV show frugal. Case in point. When my now husband and I were still dating, his sister got married. For the reception, his parents bought stacks of plastic plates from Sam's Club. They weren't the super thin ones, but they were one time use plastic plates. Not made to be reused. Apparently, my mill decided that it would be a waste to throw them away. She wanted to reuse them, but they didn't tell the guests this for some reason. So people were, rightly, assuming they were disposable plates and putting them in the trash can. Halfway through the reception, my mill and Phil are digging through the trash cans to find the plates, pulling them out, and putting them in a plastic bin to take home and wash. I thought my husband was going to have a stroke at the end of the reception. While I was mopping the floor in my heels, since we were too cheap to pay the $100 cleaning fee for the venue, my mill and her sister were arguing about who was going to wash up all the plates. Mill one, she took them all home, washed them up, and still pulls them out for family events like Christmas and Thanksgiving. I refer to them as the trash can plates. When my husband and I got married a year or so later, she tried to give them to me to use at our reception. But thank god the venue had their own plates. I do my best to never eat off of the trash can plates when we are at their house. You should have taken the plates. Then you should have lost them. My in-laws. They can get 14 people together at the dining room table. Sibings. Spouses and kids. Some live far away and they don't see each other more than once a year. 
yet no one is talking. You can hear the clock tick. With my family, with 6 people, there will be 5 different conversations all at the same time. It drives my husband bonkers. My wife's family does this weird thing where they act like complete strangers to each other. They are really nice, good, honest people, but their level of familiarity with each other is non-existent. They don't say they love each other, hug each other, or show real concern for each other's well-being. My family is part Italian, so we emote at the drop of a hat. My mother gets teary-eyed whenever I leave after Sunday night dinner. I live 5 minutes away. One of her sisters lives like 10 hours away. She came down for a week. When she got there, there was no excitement to see her or anything. When she left, it was the middle of the afternoon and everyone was home. She just said okay, I'll see you all. I think her dad nodded, but other than that nothing. We didn't see her again for almost a year. Most people would think they hate her or something, but it's completely natural to them. So I make it a point to be really happy and excited when I see any of her family, even her dad who we see like 3 times a week. They all get a real kick out of it and seem to enjoy that someone was actually looking forward to see them. I think I'm breaking them down. Her dad will actually come to the door to say goodbye when we are leaving now, which weirds my wife out. Her dad calls sauce gravy, pizza gravy, spaghetti gravy, IT's not freaking gravy Greg. Okay so everyone thinks their way is the only right way to load the dishwasher but my mother-in-law and husband seriously need loading lessons. Silverware goes in the appropriate silverware compartments not randomly strewn about on the top rack. Or somehow she wedges three forks in one silverware space. Our dishwasher has spots for individual silverware pieces. And bowls plates cannot be literally on top of each other. I have to end up rewashing everything. Lord have mercy. How hard is it to load a dishwasher properly? I hate this. There is clearly a designated spot for bowls, plates, big plates, etc. The dishwasher can hold twice as much the correct way. Of course I can't bring this up with my family because then I get the OC or volunteering to do the dishes I guess. My husband's family gathers around the Christmas tree and opens gifts sign by one. And if you don't like your gift you give IT back to his mom to exchange IT. This was horrifying to me and my brother-in-law, Sil's husband. We were used to opening ugly sweaters, smiling and saying thank you, all while planning the goodwill run in our heads. While mortifying, she does it because she wants to buy exactly what you like while still having presents for you to open. At this point my Sil and husband almost never return stuff. Once I opened a pink shirt and took half a second too long to just say thank you to get out of the horrible tradition and my husband said, without blinking oh mom, circus bread hates pink, you should do black or grey and handed it back to her, tl, dr, my mother in law wants to get us the perfect christmas gift so she accepts returns the day of, I'd find that pretty dang uncomfortable myself. But if everyone is genuinely not offended if someone returns a gift then I suppose it's pretty harmless. All the food is specifically someone's food. Can I have some chips? No. Those are my dad's chips. Can I have a glass of odge? Nope. Mom's odge. It works for them, but seems completely selfish and unreasonable to me. That would never fly at home with my parents and brother and sister. Everything in the kitchen is fair game. If you get something for yourself, it goes in your room or else somebody will eat it in 2.8 seconds. Not so weird, but my girlfriend's mother invents a lot of words or nicknames for things, mostly portmanteaus. My girlfriend and her brother grew up using them as regular words, and she seems shocked when she realizes that twiggle is not a real word that is widely used. You can't just drop this without any example, that's pure behavior. My boyfriend's family stores all of the bath towels in the parents' bathroom. Every time one of the kids wanted to take a shower, they would go to their parents' room, take a towel, shower, and then return it. Keep in mind, the kids' bathroom has towel racks. They just don't use them for reasons beyond me. There's probably a story behind this. They talk crap, all the time, about each other, about friends, about strangers. I was raised in a don't have anything nice to say, then shut up household. 
It bugs my so when I don't engage in her crap talking. She asks if I have anything to add to the matter and when I say no she thinks it's because I'm taking their side but in reality. And I have to remind her of this. It's because it's none of my freaking business. Also on a lighter note, I just found out that they give Halloween gifts. As in it's Halloween. Here's a present. That's weird. They are the most dedicated lingerers I have ever met. It led to a serious talk with my BF about what the screaming with my eyes signal means. I have to limit gatherings with his extended family because they're so draining. The shortest public dinner I have had with them was 3 hours, not counting the goodbye ritual, which is worthy of its own rant. About 75% of conversations are stories everyone's heard before, a few of which are purposefully always retold as an unspoken tradition of sorts. And then, not only is there this weird expectation to stay long after signing the check, rather than going somewhere else that isn't closing up, but they will insist on staying when they've run out of things to talk about. Sitting in a few minutes of silence until someone thinks of something to say, usually remembering another story to retell, and then falling back into silence. The night will inevitably end with the mortifying process of being the people lingering after closing time. Sitting in silence as the rest of the table is oblivious to the glares of the staff. Worse than table campers who just can't find an end to their lively convo. No, the staff obviously sees us holding up closing so that we can sit in uncomfortable silence together. And when BF and I say we're tired and begin the goodbye ritual, even we are visibly struggling to keep our eyes open. We're met with genuine surprise and a chorus of what? So soon? Let Emmy retell this story before you go. That sounds like a nightmare. I would just start doing Irish goodbyes and hope they're not the types to get offended by it. Every Thanksgiving in Detroit, the local rock station plays Alice's Restaurant by Arlo Guthrie, a fun 18 minute folk song if you've never heard it, at 11am exactly. My wife's whole family gathers in the living room and listens to the song in more or less silence, aside from the occasional hum or chuckle, it's their Thanksgiving tradition. My fiancé's father and him do the same thing, except they have it on vinyl. My in-laws sang happy birthday to my brother-in-law at a funeral viewing while standing around the open casket so grandma could be involved. I had to leave the room. Weirdest thing I've ever experienced. Years ago, I had an ex whose sister-in-law was an amateur opera singer. Without fail. Every time she was at the house she was corralled by the rest of the family into banging out an aria in front of everyone. A cappella. To be fair, she was pretty good, but just standing in the living room belting this out in front of everyone. All cooing and clapping and whatnot. While I sit there, toes curling, counting the seconds till it stopped. We had a girl at my office who did this. Every birthday or Christmas party. It was nice, but WTF. It was just awkward. They show barely any sign of physical affection, not saying that's bad, just strange to me. I come from a huggy family and when I hug my in-laws it's awkward and makes me laugh. That's pretty much how I was raised. Hugs still weird me out some time. On the extreme opposite end of the spectrum, my so massages his mom's shoulders at random, and air humps her a lot while she does mundane kitchen things either unaware or visibly strained but probably too stubborn to tell him to stop. Matt, what the frick? They never introduce people. We were shopping with my mother-in-law and I thought we were getting stalked by this strange dude. Turned out it was her new boyfriend who was joining us for the day. First time meeting my husband and me. Strange beyond strange. At holidays they have the same 3 or 4 people in the kitchen making food. They must put onions in or on everything. Ham. Smothered in onions. Potatoes. Filled with onions. Corn. Filled with onions. Bread. Onion bread. Jello. Onions in it. Cottage cheese. Onions stirred in it. To make matters worse my son and I are both allergic to onions. Think lactose intolerance. We must bring our own food to eat. Several times we brought our own food and someone noticed the lack of onions. They stirred a bowl full in the dish crock pot without a thought. We then had to make a trip to the grocery store. Buy something. Go back and cook it. What the frick is wrong with these people? Why are onions so amazing to them? Why would you see a dish without onions in it and immediately think, I need to add onions to this. They say that they're coming up for a few days and then leave in a couple of months. An uncle came up. 
three weeks early, for a wedding the 15th of August and still hasn't left, I'm going nuts. That seems a lot more serious than most of the responses in this thread and you're about a month overdue for a very serious talk. They communicate by yelling to each other throughout the house instead of just walking 2 meters into the next room. It gets really annoying when you're on the phone and they start chatting away to you from down the hall. They only have 2 or 3 topics they can talk about and they practically yell when they speak. They are all yelling over the top of each other constantly and I typically just sit quietly and wait for it to be time to go home. They also can't make a decision to save their lives. Take something simple like what kind of pizza to order for dinner. Every goddamn time it ends up hamburger. 17 years I've been with my wife and the pizza is always hamburger. But we can't order it without an hour and a half off. What kind do you want? Well I don't care. What kind do you want? Annoyed sighs from everyone. Does anyone have a preference? Me in the background. How's about we get what we always get? Hamburger. Do you want hamburger? I don't care. Do you want hamburger? Next time just be really enthusiastic for hamburger. Led the way. Also WTF is hamburger pizza. It only happened once. But on the first Christmas morning I spent at my in-laws house my wife, her two sisters, and her mother had a contest to see who could deep throat a wine bottle the furthest. My wife won. No, you won. We play the same games every Christmas. Catch phrase. Apples to apples. Dice games, etc. Every single year they have to read the entire rule book of every game before we play. We spend more time discussing the rules of apples to apples rather than actually playing. So I generally just sit at the end of the table and get drunk with my mother-in-law, who also recognizes how strange they are. Anything that could go stale, chips, bread, cereal, etc. was kept in oven to keep it fresh. They didn't have a bread box or bag clips, just put everything in the oven. Started many a fire because I didn't look before I cooked. I don't know how you all grew up but there were only two occasions in the year that you would receive gifts. Birthdays and Christmas. My so's parents buy them gifts on Halloween, Easter, Thanksgiving, Columbus Day, Labor Day, 4th of July, and so many more. I find it extremely weird. Some of my in-laws are chiropractors that claim to be able to fix all sorts of physical and mental ailments via their holistic healing. I mentioned my OCD once and my wife's cousin wanted to crack my back because psychology isn't real. Then he told me gluten makes people psychopaths. And I was making my son retarded by getting him his vaccinations. We're not invited for visits anymore. As a therapist anger towards lack of education intensifies. I could go into details of the narcissism and general emotional abuse they purvey, but my wife's mom fights with her husband about everything. She left Thanksgiving once because her husband said quarter till 6 when it was actually quarter after 6. This resulted in my mother-in-law screaming, crying, and running out of her car to drive around for 5 or 10 minutes. Then she sat in silence at dinner, which was fine with me. What's weirder about her is that she thinks she knows everything about everything, and she has a doctorate in education. For instance, pork must be cooked extra extra well done, even cured bacon, because you have like a 150% chance of getting trichinosis from eating anything less than 200 degree pork. Her parents were farmers back in the 1960s and at one point this was true. Today though, trichinosis is eliminated in developed countries except for wild animals, but she'll never in a million years believe it. I have had that argument with my husband repeatedly. He insists that I cook pork well done every time. I insist that nowadays it's perfectly safe to eat without making it into a hockey puck. He refuses to believe me. My girlfriend's family just burps super loud anytime they have to. When I pointed out to my girlfriend that she and her family do it she had never even noticed. Like they burp the way I would if I was hanging out with my friends drinking beer on the weekend. We will be having a family dinner and then bah, and then conversation continues. I should say I absolutely love her family and feel like I'm a part of it. The burping doesn't even bother me. I just think it's funny because no one ever acknowledges it. They don't tell each other that they love each other. My girlfriend told me that her parents never told her that they love her, but she knows they do because they visit her and give her money, etc. It's just weird to me. 
I am 32 and I don't remember the last time I said I love you to anyone in my family other than my husband. I say it to my in-laws to appease them. But I don't mean it. We all love each other. We just don't say it. We don't hug either. The television is on all the time. It could be Christmas and everyone just sits there and watches all in the family marathons. Bugs me a lot. We're here. Let's socialize. What's the point of even going if we just sit there? It could be Christmas and everyone just sits there and watches all in the family marathons. Those were the days. Not my so's family but my own. I know he thinks this crap is weird, though. Our family plays kazoo songs at every large family event. It's not just disorganized chaos, either. Occasionally there is sheet music and multiple harmonies for everyone to play. My grandfather even invested in a high quality kazoo. Wedding, kazoo love ballad, birthday, happy birthday on kazoos, Christmas dinner, jingle bells, kazoo style. Still haven't heard the funeral march on kazoos but I wouldn't bet against it. If he she doesn't work out, let me know. That's something I want to be a part of. Oh dear, so any things, d. One example, Christmas at her place everyone takes turns rolling a dice. If you get a 6, you're allowed to open one of your presents. Take sages. Dang. Tradition with our family is me and my brother sit by the tree. My parents sit on the couch and my sister sits on the lazy boy. My brother grabs the gifts, hands them to me. I yell out who it's for and toss it to the person. As you open your things. You tell them thanks and move on. Between gift tosses, I find some of my own stuff and open it quickly. Christmas in 20 minutes maximum. When they celebrate birthdays and it's time to open gifts they very candidly express their lack of excitement for certain gifts. Like they don't even attempt to pretend to like the gift. They just give a look of me and move on. This probably isn't the weirdest thing. But it seems weird to me because my mom is very independent and she raised us to be the same way. She always kind of gave us room to make our own mistakes, you know? But my in-laws, man, they are the definition of meddling. Everyone in my husband's family is all up in each other's business. They send out these family-wide emails discussing personal crap or lecturing about something and now I get included on them. Every time I read one of them all I can think is, when do these people plan on cutting the umbilical cord my husband is 42 years old, they talk to him like he's still a kid, it's insane to me. My wife's family use is seen instead of saw, I've literally never heard them say I saw it, yeah I seen that, I seen it on the TV, you saw it, you freaking saw IT, seen IT doesn't even sound right, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills, update. Seeing lots of race location questions. White. Farmland. Minnesota. You would hate living in the south. They told her nothing about sex or drugs. They told her way too much about traditional women's roles. They had a large assortment of firearms on the table first time I was at their house. And they act like when we left for college. They were glad to see her go. Didn't know that actually happened in real life. They had their childhood dog cremated and every Christmas they would take the urn and roll it on the floor saying, roll over. Then, when their mom died, they buried the urn with her. Of course I'd be late to the party on this one. My so's family uses bobby pins to collect earwax, which they then save in an envelope for grandma Nebraska. I've asked several times and nobody seems you know why. They also have a largish eraser shaped like cheese. They spend the majority of holidays coming up with ways to trick other family members into finding it. I love those widows. My husband and his family leave dirty paper towels on the kitchen counter. We went on vacation with them recently and rented a house. I knew my husband did this, but now I know why. It isn't like there was just one, but two or three. I guess they leave them laying around to wipe up multiple potential spills. I'll do this while I'm cooking for that very reason, since I'd rather not waste another paper towel if the one I have is still good enough to wipe up a spill. I'll throw them all out after I finish in the kitchen though. I guess it's just a frugality thing, but I've known people that reuse Ziploc bags and paper plates so it's not really that extreme. Mid 20s and my current so's mother is, in my opinion, just inappropriate. She drunkenly texts him in the very hours early in the morning with ridiculous crap. 
for example. She sent a picture with the caption how could you kiss one girl and let another girl suck your dong. It was a picture of him as a toddler kissing a girl on the cheek while another little girl was asleep in his lap. She also initially introduced herself to me as my so's boyfriend. She put it as that's how I have always introduced him, you know because he's never had a girlfriend. Oh and the last one. So my so has longish hair and she hates it apparently and legit got in my face about providing him with hair ties. I did not have a son so he could wear ponytails. Oh and she hates my dog because he's a pit bull. He is the sweetest. Wow that's some Freudian crap right there. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.